In today's lesson, we're going to talk about writing strong body paragraphs. Now, this contains a lot of information because for you, this is a review, um, but I do want to make sure that we cover it again so that as you start your research paper, you are set um, and ready to write really good body paragraphs that, of course, develop your thesis statement and prove your argument. All right, so just to, to start out, when writing a body paragraph, you want to follow one of the established formats. As you know, I recommend the chunk paragraph structure, uh, and in the, this is the screencast, but in the actual um, slideshow, you will be able to click here to um, access that wonderful grid that I created at the beginning of the year to share with you real specific information about each sentence type. Um, of course, you've probably been introduced to other structures, and that's okay, but let's talk about what types of sentences need to be in a body paragraph to build a strong argument. So here they are um, with regard to the chunk paragraph, the Jane Schaefer chunking method. We start with the topic sentence, and this is the main idea of the paragraph. This has been alluded to at least in your thesis statement. Then we move on to a concrete detail, and the concrete detail is simply a fact of some sort that relates to the topic sentence. So the concrete, it's called concrete, because it's meant to be a fact, okay? Great opportunity for a quote right here in this particular sentence. Then you need to create two commentary sentences. Now, this is why I think that the chunk paragraph structure is more valuable than a lot of the other formats that people teach, and that is because it asks you to write two sentences that make that all-important connection between your concrete detail, okay, that fact, and your topic sentence, and of course, the second one also then gives you the opportunity to further that idea or to make that connection between that proof, that fact, the topic sentence, and then the thesis statement so that you're always coming back to that one sentence of the essay that you're trying to prove in the entire essay. And then after you've written those four sentences, you can move on to the concluding sentence. Each paragraph needs a sentence that either ties up and finishes that paragraph off or leads the reader into the next paragraph. All right, so let's look at these types of sentences in uh, detail. Let's start with the topic sentence. Okay, so your topic sentence should refer back to the main idea of your thesis statement, okay? So let's just first say, depending on what level you are in school, okay, grade nine is fine, in terms of being able to copy and paste your thesis statement here as your topic sentence. But you need to remember that you must revise it so that that topic sentence is specific to only this paragraph, because your thesis probably contains information you're going to develop in other paragraphs. I'm going to give you an example of how to do this in a moment. As you become more sophisticated at writing, you will write topic sentences that are formatted a little bit differently than the information that you provided in your thesis statement. Okay, so don't just repeat your thesis here. The topic sentence is one of the reasons why you've chosen this thesis. Okay, it's one of the points that you're going to develop that helps to prove that big overlying idea, which is the thesis, okay? The topic sentence will guide the rest of the paragraph because everything that you say in this paragraph will prove that topic sentence, and of course the topic sentence, is one piece of evidence or one reason that proves your thesis statement. All right, let's have a look. So if we're going to revise our topic sentence from our thesis statement... Let's have a look first at a thesis. Uh, since people feel they can fully express their negative opinions about others and try to stir up violent actions against those they dislike, social media fuels a great deal of hate in this world. So if you remember, so these two examples are going to come from that uh, writing diagnostic we did at the very beginning of the school year. So if I'm going to then take that, that's my thesis statement, that is contained in my introductory paragraph. I'm going to make two paragraphs. They've got two reasons here. I'm going to make two paragraphs one over one reason, one over the other. So have a look. I have copied and pasted this thesis statement down here, and I'm going to call it the topic sentence of my first paragraph. And notice what I've done. Since people feel they can fully express their negative opinions about others, social media fuels a great deal of hate in this world. So if you notice, what I've done simply is to delete that second reason, okay, so that the topic sentence is going to, of this paragraph, is going to fulfill only one reason, 
this reason will be this topic sentence of my second paragraph. All right, so here's the, here's the other example from our diagnostic. Uh, the thesis. YouTube has a tendency to radicalize its viewers because they target vulnerable users and they plant seeds of hate and acts of discrimination. So here, I just copied and pasted that thesis at the beginning of my first body paragraph. This is actually my second body paragraph based on the structure here of the thesis statement. And I have simply crossed out and removed one of the reasons and left the other one. YouTube has a tendency to radicalize its viewers because they plant seeds of hate and acts of discrimination. That's this, this they bothers me just a little bit. I, I use some of the, some examples straight out of student work. Um, and so I just want to make a nod to that. Uh, but what I want to demonstrate here is that you can take your topic sentences straight out of your thesis. I realize that this is formulaic, but until you're really comfortable writing these types of uh, paragraphs and really building a strong essay, a formula will, will suffice. All right, let's move on to the second sentence of a body paragraph, and that is the concrete detail. Concrete is solid. You walk on it when you walk down the sidewalk. It's probably made of concrete. So if you think that concrete detail, this is a fact, okay? This is one of those reasons, one of those things that you found that helped you to draw the conclusion that you stated as your thesis. Something made you say this big thesis statement, Okay, that was your opinion. This is this is what you're going to argue in the paper. That is correct. This concrete detail is one of the facts that helped you to come to that conclusion. Okay, uh, this concrete detail is going to be directly linked to the topic sentence above it. So you need to ask yourself, why am I using the point or reason above that's stated in my topic sentence to make the conclusion I have in my thesis statement? What fact got me to that conclusion? Okay, that's what you're asking yourself, and that's the, that's the fact that you're going to then put in as your concrete detail. You might begin with something like, for example. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the concrete detail is an excellent place for a direct quote. So let's take a moment and talk about how to find and, and to use a direct quote as your concrete detail. All right, so quoting in the concrete detail. First of all, you need to include context before that direct quote. Don't just throw a quote in there and expect the reader to follow your, your thinking. The reader needs to understand either where that quote came from, um, why you've chosen it. You're gonna build that a bit more in the commentary, but it needs to be introduced, okay? Um, and it needs to be introduced in the same sentence. You're gonna use that direct quote in place of your own words as well. Okay, so don't repeat yourself. Build the ideas, okay? so. When you use a quote, it cannot be floating. It needs context. That context before the direct quote is part of the same sentence in which the direct quote is located. So you need to remember to punctuate everything correctly. If you use a simple phrase to introduce the quote, use a comma. If you are using a complete sentence to introduce the quote, use a colon. If you are only using a few words from a phrase and it flows seamlessly, then no punctuation is needed. Make sure at the end of the sentence that you place the period outside of the citation, not inside the quotation marks, okay? Or not between the citation, which is in parentheses, and the end of that quote, it goes outside the citation. Okay, so evidence for your quotes. Finding, finding a succinct piece of evidence, it needs to really help prove your ideas. Now, of avoid including extra unnecessary information. You can omit information from a paragraph by including an ellipses, that's those three dots, and this indicates that you've removed information from a quote, okay? Just because you have a long quote does not mean that you have strong evidence, so keep that in mind. A short phrase can be just as powerful and is almost always the better choice because it's concise it's specific and it doesn't fully interrupt what you're trying to prove. You need to really get to the point and choose the most important words, okay? All right, so finding your quotes. You know me, I'm back to Of Mice and Men. This is just, this is such a great example to keep building on since we studied this novella together. All right, so here we are back to that same thesis that I used when we talked about making our outline. The thesis is, George killed Lenny out of love because he wanted Lenny to die peacefully and painlessly. Okay, so as we talked about with the outline, my two points are the peaceful death and the painless death. These become the topic sentences of my two body paragraphs. 
right? So here, what I've done, like I give, gave you the example earlier, was to copy and paste that thesis statement down here, topic sentence one, okay, topic sentence two, for the two different paragraphs that I'm going to build, or, well, yeah, exactly, for the two different paragraphs that I'm going to build. Um, here's my bits of information, my proof that I'm going to use. We talked about this before, okay? So I know that you've seen those. Give you a second to just glance th over those instead of reading them to you. All right, let's build on that. We're finding a quote. All right, so um, as we've seen, we've, we've worked with this a little bit before, um, a good quote for proving Curly wanted to inflict pain on Lenny and kill him came from page 96 of the novel. And it goes like this. Curly came suddenly to life. I know who done it, he cried. That big SOB done it. I know he done it. Why, everybody else was out there playing horseshoes. He worked himself into a fury. I'm gonna get him. I'm going for my shotgun. I'll kill the big SOB myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Come on, you guys. He ran furiously out of the barn. Okay, so something I want to point out here. This was a curse word. And because I just didn't want to use the whole thing here, I used the brackets because I changed it, okay? Remember we talked about how you can do that to make a pronoun a uh, proper noun or vice versa, or change the tense of a verb. Additionally, here you notice that the period is not here. It is outside the citation. So I just wanted to point those two things out to you. Okay, so we need to hone that quote. That's a great quote to prove um, Curly's anger and his intentions towards Lenny now at this part of the novel. So. I now need to think about what context I'm going to give to this quote. How am I going to build it into my argument? Okay, so that's why I want to now, I've chosen the section of the novel that I want to use where there's some quoted information. Now I need to give it con context. So um, this quote is Curly's reaction when he finds his wife's dead body. Now I like it because it shows Curly's anger and that he wants to kill Lenny in a painful way. That's what I, that's my analysis of that section of the novella. Now that's cool and all, but I don't want to introduce it like that. I don't want to say, this quote shows Curly's reaction when he finds, that's so blah. Like let's, let's, let's be more sophisticated. Let's, let's give it something else. Okay. So here we go. I want to introduce it with my own words. That's super important. And to do this well, I really need to know which section of this quote I want to use. Okay, so I've got my context. It's in my head. I know what it is. I know this section from the novella that I want to use. But now I need to sort of bring them together and, and, and do that in a way that allows me to build my argument in the way that I want to build my argument. Okay. Um, you know, it's way too long. It's, let's find what's most important. So let's revisit my topic sentence. Okay, because that's, what am I trying to prove here? George killed Lenny out of love because he wanted Lenny to die peacefully and painlessly. Aha. So from this, I know that I want my quote to prove that Curly intended on giving Lenny a painful death. That's what I want to focus on. So we go back to the quote and we find what part is, is most important. What in here proves that Curly wants to inflict that pain? Okay, and I've highlighted it here for you. I'm going to get him. I'm going for my shotgun. I'll kill the big SOB myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Okay. Now this is really the only part of the quote that I want to use because it shows the, the intention of inflicting pain. It's also directly said by Curly. That dialogue makes it even stronger. Okay. Um, now, but why, why, why did I choose this? This why will help me in a moment when I'm building my commentary sentences, okay? So the whole rationale that I use when I choose my quote and when I decide what context to use to introduce it and how that's going to prove my topic sentence and thus my thesis statement, all of that rationale is what I'm going to build in when I'm writing my argument, okay? You're taking the reader down that path of thinking, okay? So when I look at this, I'm going to get him. To me, that signals revenge, right? I'm going to get him. Okay, well, that's revenge and at its purest form. Okay, I'm going for my shotgun, blah, blah, blah. I'll kill him myself. We know, you know, he wants to kill Lenny. That's our proof. Um, and this part right here, I'll shoot him in the guts. We know shooting someone in the guts is going to inflict pain on them. There are faster and easier ways to shoot someone or something to, to kill it. I'm sorry. I grew up in Texas around guns, so I have a little bit of knowledge of that. We learned it as well. Um, when uh, Candy's dog was killed. We also learned that. So even if you didn't have that same context that I do in life, um, 
you would know, you would be able to pull that out. Okay, so I've rationalized what's important about this quote and what piece of it I wanna use instead of all of this, okay? So I'm gonna come down here. Now, what I need to do is to create a good sentence or phrase that creates that conflict, I'm sorry, that context for the quote, and I need those words to attach to the front of the quote to make a clear, grammatically correct sentence. Okay, so I'm crafting as I go here. I'm doing my thinking out loud for you. So here we go. When Curly finds his wife's lifeless body, that's my context, he's filled with anger and revenge and he vows. All right, that's the context. You see how that's a little bit of summary because we're talking about a novella here. We're responding to literature in this particular instance. So there's a tiny bit of summary, not a lot of summary, just enough to explain why Curly says these next words. Now, he's filled with anger and revenge. I'm going to state that because we, we decided before, you know, I'm going to get him shows that revenge. And he vows. I use this verb instead of says because a vow is like a promise. So we know that this is, this is exactly how Curly's going to go about it and he's not going to change his mind. Now, this is a complete sentence, comma, and he vows. I need a comma here. Okay, this is like a dialogue tag as I introduce that. So comma and the quote. I'm going to get him. I'm going for my shotgun. I'll kill the big SOB myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Close quotation marks. Citation, period. Okay, so I've honed that, that quote down with my context. Okay, and the quote itself. Grammatically correct sentence. Okay. Now, let's move on. We've got that. That was our commentary. I'm sorry, that was our um, concrete detail. When Curly finds his wife's lifeless body, he's filled with anger and revenge, and he vows, I'm going to get him. I'm going for my shotgun. I'll kill the big SOB myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Now, we need to go back and talk about, um, we need to move forward, sorry, with our commentary sentences and think backwards to what we thought about before. How are we going to link that concrete detail to the topic sentence and thus to the thesis statement so that we're building and proving our argument? Okay, now the commentary sentences are where you show that you truly understand the concept, that you have an informed opinion or idea regarding the topic. Tell the reader the connection you made between your piece of evidence, the topic sentence, and the thesis. Okay, and I did that a little bit for you up here when I explained here why I chose this part of the quote. Okay, so I've already done this thinking. Sometimes we don't do it this out loud, do you see? But I'm trying to help you track your own train of thought. Now, this piece is vital. So vital that there should be two commentary sentences so that you're really truly building that argument. So dig into the deeper meaning. Why is this important? Why was that concrete detail important? What does it signify? How does it connect? And I mean connect that topic sentence to the thesis statement, making that an, an argument, okay? This here, the commentary sentences, are really the meat of your paragraph. This is where you do your explanation. You're leading us down your train of thought. Okay, so commentary for a quote example. As a reminder, here's my concrete detail. I showed you that a second ago. And what I clicked back up to a moment ago, why I chose this quote. Okay, so I'm reminding you of the thinking we did as we chose the quote because that is where we get our commentary information. All right, so first commentary sentence for a quote example. So as a reminder, here's my concrete detail or my evidence. I'm just leaving it there so that you can think about and make that connection. So my first commentary will explain the validity of my quote. For example, okay, Curly made it very clear as he ran furiously out of the barn. I chose another quote there just because it works so well with my words, okay? Curly made it very clear as he ran furiously out of the barn that he didn't just want Lenny to die. He wanted Lenny to die painfully. Shooting someone in the guts burns as the stomach acid leaks out and they die in a pool of their own blood as they slowly bleed to death. Now, I have to apologize again for being from Texas. I went I went there. I went all the way gruesome with that. But I think I made it really clear that being shot in the gut is going to be a really bad way to die. Okay? It's not going to be quick, and it's going to have extra pain involved. Okay? So I think that really sh showed the validity here in this quote that I chose. All right. So I'm going to build on that. I need that second commentary sentence. I'm not done yet. Okay? 
I have explained my quote, but now I need to make that connection between what my quote proves and how that relates to my topic sentence. Okay, remember we're always relating back to that topic sentence and thus back to that thesis statement. So my topic sentence again, I have to remember, I have to remind myself, George killed Lenny out of love because he wanted Lenny to die painlessly. Now, I've proven that Curly wants to kill Lenny painfully, so now I just need to relate that to George's reason for choosing to kill Lenny. Okay, do you see my thinking? Do you see how I'm always going backwards through my steps to make sure that my argument is on track? Okay, so it might help to see it all together. Topic sentence. George killed Lenny out of love because he wanted Lenny to die painlessly. When Curly finds his wife's lifeless body, he is filled with anger and revenge, and he vows, I'm going to get him. I'm going for my shotgun. I'll kill the big SOB myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Curly made it very clear as he ran furiously out of the barn that he didn't want Lenny, didn't just want Lenny to die. He wanted Lenny to die painfully. Shooting someone in the guts burns as the stomach acid leaks out and they die in a pool of their own blood as they slowly bleed to death. I'm so sorry that my, my example is so gruesome. I apologize. Okay, so I'm going to build on that first commentary sentence and make that all important link to my topic sentence that George wants Lenny to die painlessly, okay? So here's my next commentary. George loved Lenny like a brother, and he knew that the only way to prevent Lenny from enduring the long, painful death Curly planned to inflict on him was to kill Lenny himself, okay? So it's really easy from that quote to get off track and really talk about Curly and Curly's anger. So when you come to that second commentary sentence, make sure that you're really thinking about how to make that link back to that topic sentence, okay? All right, now, here's where we do it all again. Here's where we then transition with maybe even, even a, just a simple word or a second example or additionally a word like this. Um, find a second concrete detail that fully proves your topic sentence and build that same thing again. Concrete detail, commentary, commentary before um, you finish off the paragraph. So um, as I sort of jumped ahead of myself there, um, here's where you begin to discuss a second point to support your topic sentence. So a really well-reasoned argument means that um, a body paragraph really needs two, two ways that you're discussing it, two ways to prove that it's correct, okay? Um, so begin the chunk cycle again with a new concrete detail followed by two commentary sentences. When transitioning from the analysis after your first point to the context of your second point, make sure you include a transition. So I did mention that. Um, you can think about what are some transitions you can use in your body paragraph. I just gave you some, for example, a second example, additionally, this type of thing. All right, so you've done that second chunk and you need a concluding sentence. The concluding sentence will end the paragraph, bringing all of your eyes, ideas together. It should either remind the reader of your topic sentence or lead the reader to the next paragraph. A carefully crafted concluding sentence may actually do both. And it's really going to depend on which body paragraph this is. If it's the first one, you probably do want to transition into that second one while finalizing off that idea. Now, if the first body paragraph and the second body paragraph are actually two different ways of proving one idea in your... Um, in your thesis, then you definitely want that first one to transition into the second one and the second one to finalize the, that one category that we were calling it before in our thesis statement before you move on to another. So it really depends on what, um, what body paragraph you're, you're writing. Okay, so here's the basic setup for the body paragraph just to give you a structure to pull from. You can use this as you write. Okay, topic sentence. Concrete detail, commentary one, commentary two, transition, which does not need to be its own sentence. It might simply be a word followed by a comma. Your second concrete detail, two commentary sentences to support that, and we finalize it all with a concluding sentence. So I just did that sort of as an outline for you. All right, so here's my body paragraph. I've brought it all together. I've written a second um, chunk for this paragraph, and I brought it all together for you, and here's where you'll also find the Example of the conclusion sentence. Here we go. George killed Lenny out of love because he wanted Lenny to die painlessly. When Curly finds his wife's lifeless body, he is filled with anger and revenge, and he vows, I'm going to get him. I'm going for my shotgun. I'll kill the, the big SOB myself. I'll shoot him in the guts. Steinbeck, 96. 
Curly made it very clear, as he ran furiously out of the barn, that he didn't just want Lenny to die for killing his wife. He wanted Lenny to die painfully. Shooting someone in the guts burns as the stomach acid leaks out, and they die in a pool of their own blood as they slowly bleed to death. George loved Lenny like a brother, and he knew that the only way to prevent Lenny from enduring the long, painful death Curly planned to inflict on him was to kill Lenny himself. Additionally, as George heard Curly and the mob coming nearer to where he and Lenny were hiding, George made the painful decision to shoot Lenny in the back of the head, making Lenny's death instantaneous. George learned this technique when Candy's dog was shot, and it was Candy's expression of regret for not killing his own dog a dog that he loved and who had been by his side for years, that helped George make the final decision to kill Lenny himself. George knew that there was no way out for Lenny. Curly was going to kill him. Knowing this, George made the decision to kill Lenny because he did not want Lenny to suffer. Okay, so I hope that example really helped you to see how to build that. I know this has been a long video, but I'm really trying to help you to rationalize your own thinking and break it down into parts that will help you um, to build a strong argument. I will put this PowerPoint presentation um, up for you as well so that you can access it. There are a few other examples that a few of you have written as well that might help you to um, work through your body paragraph. And of course, there's this basic setup as well as, if I scroll up here, um, as well as here, that link to the document we used at the beginning of the year um, that explains all of the elements of the chunk paragraph. All right, I hope you find this helpful um, and good luck starting your research paper.